So in this video, I'm talking one of the hardest things to do, which is trying to figure out how you should train as a natural athlete. If you're like me, you are probably really frustrated following some of the conventional training ideas that are put forward by some of the people who you probably look up to, who have really impressive physiques, the influencers and the popular bodybuilders. And of course, the celebrities who seem to transform almost overnight. And you're faithfully following the routines and dietary advice that they give. And see, here's the hard part. You train really hard. You go at it. You follow the diet perfectly. And you're frustrated with the result. And you're doing exactly what that person who you look up to is doing, but you don't have the same results. And you're wondering, well, is there something wrong with me? Maybe I just don't have good genetics. And unfortunately, I think this sidelines a lot of natural athletes from ever realizing their potential. And that's a real problem because there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. The problem is the advice you're getting is coming from men and women who use drugs. And a lot of who use drugs seem to have this idea that their knowledge of how they got to where they are would somehow or the other be relevant to the majority of population who don't use drugs. And that's absolutely not true. People work far too hard and spend far too much money on supplements that don't work whatsoever and also on training protocols and dietary advice that doesn't apply to them. And so in this video, I'm going to give you the inside scoop of what actually happens when someone uses drugs and how their experiences often have nothing to do with what you need to do as a natural act to go forward. Hopefully this will help you make better decisions in terms of where you're getting your information from and your own decisions about your training and your diet. So stay tuned and let's talk a little more about this. So in this video, I'm talking about how do you as a natural athlete navigate the noise of all the information from people who have really impressive physiques at the top of the sport, but who happen to be using steroids and how do you figure out what to do? But before I go any further, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in, especially those who should be a one-stop place for anyone who's training naturally without drugs. Thanks so much for the support and do be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're first in line to get the new content as it comes out. So here's the real problem and why it's actually natural that most people will look to those who use steroids for information on how to train. If you want to do really well in a particular sport, you would look at the individuals for the top of the sport, copy what they do, and get the same results. But as far as building muscle and having a great physique is concerned, that's simply not the case. This isn't archery or baseball or the type of activities where by your results are directly proportional to the hard work you put into it. It's absolutely not because drugs change everything. And the fitness influences of today and the ones back in my time back in the magazines all pretty much make a living by being experts in what they do. But as I said before, if you're a natural athlete, a lot of what they're talking about does not apply to you. It's like trying to get advice about rowing a boat from someone who happens to be a champion speedboat racer. It really doesn't add up. And unfortunately, a lot of people out there who use drugs don't realize that the advice that they're giving will not work for natural athletes. They're either convinced that it will or they convince themselves that it will because it's profitable. And to be quite honest, when I was younger, scientists actually said that steroids didn't make that much difference in terms of someone's overall performance or physique. It was a very weird time, but I saw something that convinced me and actually put me on the path to making sure that I never looked at a muscle magazine again as a source of information or ever took any information from someone using drugs as something that's completely credible, regardless of how popular they were or how many competitions that they won. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna have a very different perspective on fitness, bodybuilding, and steroids the same way I did after witnessing it. So here's what happened. There's a guy in the gym, let's call him Zach. And Zach was absolutely bent on using steroids. He had been training alongside me for the past year or two, and, and he wasn't exceptional by any stretch of the imagination. He treated mediocre intensity. His diet really wasn't that great. And the gains that he had reflected it. 
he didn't look tremendously impressive. And he was very aware that if he weren't using drugs, there was no way you would ever make it at the top of professional bodybuilding. Now, bear in mind, this is pre-internet, and being able to find drugs was not as easy as it tends to be today, unfortunately. And so it took him a while to figure out who to get drugs from and to win their confidence, because back then as well, people didn't sell drugs to everybody. But he was finally able to get the drugs he was looking for, and he was very vocal about how happy and excited he was to start this. And then something strange happened. Didn't see him for several months, two months to be exact. He wasn't at the gym, and since we weren't really friends, I pretty much forgot about him until he came back. Because when he came back, he was huge. He was tremendously bigger than the last time I saw him, and I was absolutely dumbfounded. His shoulders were bigger, his chest was bigger, his arms were bigger, his back was bigger. His legs weren't that much bigger, but everything else was impressively larger than the last time I had seen him. This was the first time I had seen someone start using anabolic steroids and have that type of a reaction. It was really eye-opening. And so I said to him that he must be really happy with the progress that he made. I also wanted to know where he was training for the past two months. At which point he looked at me and said that he actually wasn't that happy about his progress because his work schedule had become so much that he wasn't able to go to the gym for the past two months. That's right. For the past two months, he hadn't been working out. And because when you're using steroids, you can't just stop, he decided just to keep on going, hoping that he'd soon be able to get to the gym, but he wasn't for a full two months. Now, to say that I was shocked would be an understatement. But what was really important was what happened next. When he walked into the gym, everyone complimented him for how fantastic he looked. And then people started asking him, what was he doing for particular body parts? They'd come to him and say, Zach, your arms, they look fantastic. What do you do? And he would start telling them his training routine with the idea somehow that what he had been doing before when he was training was responsible for his arms looking the way that they did. And fascinatingly enough, when he did start training in the gym, you would expect him to get much bigger, and he didn't. Actually, over the years, he never really got that much bigger than his initial gain. And so at the end of the day, the way he looked was almost 100% dependent on the drugs he was using, not his training. And so he decided to become a personal trainer because he said people kept on coming up to him asking for training advice. And he felt really good about the fact that he could help people realize their goals with his experience. Yeah. And that really set me on the path of understanding that I had to find my own way. That I could not rely on information about diet and training people using drugs because very often, even they seem to be somewhat deluded about the reason why they looked the way they did. Now, I'm not saying that because you use drugs, you automatically don't know anything about diet or training. But I can say that among those who use drugs, this tends to be the exception rather than the rule. And so it comes down to what should you be looking for in terms of information from someone in terms of training and diet. Here's how I approach it. I've always gone with the iron rule. It doesn't matter what someone looks like. Someone looking a certain way is not an indication as to whether or not you should follow what he or she is doing. Even me, you should not look at me and say, well, Kevin's really jacked and he's natural because, and therefore I should just blindly follow whatever Kevin said. Don't do that at all because there's something called the error of small numbers. 
You cannot take the success of one particular individual following a protocol and expect that that somehow is going to magically work for the entire population. So don't look at me, look at what I did. Look at whether or not what I did was repeatable because that's what science is about. Science is about trying to find a protocol that can be repeated under any circumstance over and over. So naturally intense, high intensity training, the workouts that I do three times a week, anywhere from 10, 15, max 20 minutes. It doesn't just work for me. It is something I have taught as a personal trainer to hundreds of men and women over the past 33 years of my career. That's what you're looking at. My life work, not what I look like and not what anybody else looks like. But even though I have a successful protocol, I will never say that everyone should do it because the other things you need to be looking at as a natural athlete is whether or not this particular protocol is sustainable for you. Is it something that you can realistically do for years on end? And if you look at a lot of the training modalities out there, it's not realistic for regular people to be able to be in a gym five, six days a week for an hour on end when their lives and livelihood don't revolve around fitness. And so you have to think about what's sustainable because as a natural athlete, I can tell you that gains take a really long time. And to realize your potential, you have to find a system that you're gonna be stable with and stick with nonstop for years on end. It took me a good 11 years to get from where I started off to being able to step on a natural bodybuilding stage and really feel like I belonged on there. 11 years. And so if a fad comes around or some popular person is doing a particular way of training or a particular way of eating, some kind of dietary stuff coming out, and it's not something you can see yourself doing for the next 10 plus years, forget about it and find something else. The other question, an important question you have to ask yourself is, is this a way of training that's gonna get me injured? A lot of individuals who popularize ways of training had tremendous and horrendous injuries and yet people still blindly follow their methods of training. That right there should be a wake up call to the fact that you should not be doing it. If they destroyed their bodies by following a particular protocol, it is not something that you should consider doing yourself. The other question you have to ask yourself is, is the person advocating this particular form of training who did this form of training, did they age well? Were they able, without the use of testosterone replacement therapy, were able to have a really great physique and a really healthy lifestyle in their later years? Watching what someone does in their 20s is completely meaningless. If someone is able to have decades of looking fantastic and continually look fantastic, as a lot, a lot of natural bodybuilders consistently do, and that's something you need to take into consideration. Now, remember, if you're trying any new form of training or dietary procedures, that you also have to understand that trying to figure out what really works requires six to nine months of you eating the same thing every single day and staying faithful to it. You're going to get some potential gains from almost any training protocol for the first several weeks to the first one or two months, if it's different from what you've been doing. But the real test comes six, nine months down the road doing the same thing. And you have to, again, keep your diet the same. If not, you're not gonna know whether or not it really works. A lot of people will start a new routine and when they start their new routine, they'll clean their diet up and they'll attribute their new routine to being the reason why they had such a better looking physique as opposed to the fact that their diet changed. Again, if you want to be a natural athlete, you have to be a bit of a scientist. You have to make sure you have control and know that the training or dietary changes that you're making are responsible for your progress. And that can only happen if you keep everything consistent and make a comparisons over different things over the course of many months. It's not easy, but here's the beauty of it. If you find yourself of that path of self-discovery, 
what you discover at the end isn't just a way to make your muscles bigger and make your abs ripple and make yourself look really fantastic and feel fantastic. It's also a way of learning about yourself. For me, it's a spiritual path and one that has helped me not just have a great physique, but also become a better person. So I hope this video helps you on your natural path of self-discovery. Stay natural. Know that I believe in you. Make sure when you get to where you're going that you look behind you and you share and help as many people as you can as well. And as always, Excelsior.